What's good, YouTube? Today we're going to be revisiting one of my new favorite decks, which is the Inca deck. Uh, definitely, definitely a bit of an out there, weird idea, but uh, it revolves around these uh, these cards that came out in Absolute Power Force, which are Oracle of the Sun, and there's two tuners. We don't play the other one, so you don't need to worry about it because Fire Ant kind of sucks. Um, but there's the Supe one, and then there's Applicato Kill, and they're all three diff have different um, floating effects. I also, by the way, do not play the Moon and Sun Dragons that you can make with them because the Moon and Sun Dragons are just like suck and are not worth it, unfortunately. <laughs> like this. So the conclusion I've come to, you're literally just better off filling the extra with as many like generic good synchros as you can, uh, which is what we've ended up doing. Um, so I don't even bother playing those. Uh, mainly, the deck revolves around the synergy between these three guys. Like I said, three different sort of floating effects that we abuse with, uh, with stuff like Limit Reverse. Um, so Oracle of the Sun drops itself and it searches the tuner. The tuner, when destroyed by a card effect, searches the Oracle of the Sun guy, and uh, obviously they're both limit reverse targets. Uh, Oracle of the Sun's pretty solid, you know. It's just a, it's like a 1k attack, 2k defense, level 5 Sidra. You can use it with Honest, you can use it for Synchro plays, you can use it to tribute out Caius. Uh, and then Applicato Kill is like a dimensional alchemist that summons back Oracle from the Sun. So it's like an 18 beater that floats, it's pretty good. Uh, I tried very hard to make... Chaos End Master work in here because Oracle of the Sun is one of the best generic Chaos End Master targets. Um, which Chaos End Master is like a it's a fire dog, but it's a it's like a fifteen hundred warrior light guy, so you can use it with Honest and, and Book of Moon and stuff. But unfortunately, I just could not get a build with Chaos End Master that felt like it was working well for me. So we have kind of defaulted, gone back to this sort of mill heavy limit reverse build. Um, and I tried to just adapt that and make it as good as I really could. Uh, so this is what we got. We're on three of this guy, three of this guy, and then two of the Applicato Kills. Uh, you could maybe go three of this guy. It kind of depends. Um, obviously, we're using Supe to get Oracle out of the deck as soon as possible instead of using Chaos End Master. But still, you can usually get Oracle out of the deck between this and the milling very quickly. I just felt like two Applicato Kill plus two Caius was kind of the ratio I wanted to go for in, sort of, uh, in terms of your cards that sort of require setup and then we also have a sork in here we play what, like five darks and then or we play yeah five other darks and we play a good bit of lights one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven yeah you should pretty much always have a light between charge and all the Ryko stuff um and then we play like five darks so i think sork is actually more than warranted in here especially with all of the milling that we're going to be doing uh and then of course as mentioned we have a big light sworn or Ryko mill package to try and set up that limit reverse ASAP. So we're on triple Raikou, double Hamster, and Lila, as well as Charge. Of course, wanting to have the Lila to sort of justify the Charge on top of the double Hamster, and then also it gives us another good thing to search for the Honest. Um, Honest is live more than you would think in here, since you can always search into Oracle super easily. Um, so it's not like Honest is uh, is dead often. And then we got Sangan Trooper, of course, other limit reverse targets you gotta have. And we already talked a little bit about the Caius. Um, Gore's Trag. Gore's in here might seem odd because of the limit reverse, but it's like super insanely necessary, I think. It's just like you play the level one tuners, so then having Gore's is super good because it just gives you a level seven token and stuff to make level eights with that. And then also it gives you a light monster to use with Honest, and also it gives you tribute fodder for Caius. So there's just like too many reasons Gore's is good to not play Gore's. Uh, and then spell lineup is just a bunch of staples, and we got some generic defense in there, and then we got the limit reverses. So that's just about comprises the entire build that we're working with right now. I think uh, this version is solid. I'm definitely still looking for ways to make it better. Um, I would I would have obviously preferred to have a Chaos End Master build, but um, as of now, we've kind of stalled slash given up on that version. So this is the, the build we're going to be going with. All right, we got two replays. Two replays here against... Two different, like, plant decks. This is, like, the dark chaos plant thing. So we're going second. We don't have a, a normal summon. Definitely not a great feeling. I decided to just set them both. I don't play around it being Raikou because I don't know if I can afford to do that if it's not because they'll just get really aggressive into me and stuff. So I just decided to set the dust shoot, set the bottomless, and then dust shoot immediately. And then they do, I think, just summon tomato and swing. Uh, now there's one card we don't know in their hand, and that one card is called Dark Arm Dragon. So here, I think we need to crash. It would suck tremendously if this was Dimensional Prison, I guess. But, um, 
I think it's better to set up the limit reverse, like out the tomato, uh, get the soupe in graveyard along with the uh, along with the Oracle of the Sun. So now we have two separate limit reverse targets. So we can just set all the limit reverses here, not have to care. Uh, they draw another tomato, and I think we just let this go. And then we limit reverse an end phase. Now we're gonna go for that Caius play, which gets judgmented, I believe. So that at least forces out the Solemn. And at this point, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to set this, and if they drew into Storm in one of these past two turns, I guess we're, we're sad. But they don't. Um, now they go for Twilight Rose, and they just attack into the Mirror Force. So we do get some decent value out of the Mirror Force. Then we go for Charge. At this point, I just want to out both the tokens so we don't get, like, Kaius or something. Um, so I use the Limit Reverse aggressively to get back that Oracle of the Sun. And then we set the Compulsory. Opponent draws into a Dark Creator. Uh, they do make a greedy play, a Dad, the back row, and um, it does... Yeah, it does immediately get punished there because we have the bottomless trap hole. They probably should have just dadded. I don't know. It's like you don't want to dad the Oracle of the Sun because then we just get a search. And you also don't want to dad the Lila because they want to take the Lila and pop our other back row. Um, but they actually don't pop the back row first. Instead, they summon the Plague, which I'm not sure why they did it that way because it just seems strictly like you could have set the Plague um, and just taken less damage or something. So we do make Goyo Guardian here, take the Plague Spreader, so now they don't have access to the Plague Engrave. They go set Mirror Force, and I think we just make Stardust, Normal Summon, Lyle attack, and I'm pretty sure that wins through everything except, like, Return for the Different Dimension or something. Uh, so we're going to take game number one. Definitely, the odds were not in our favor there with the going second with no Normal Summons. Um, but we did have the Dust Shoot, which can kind of help. Uh, so we go Trooper, we get a really nice mill, milling... Two different limit reverse targets. Of course, you want the Oracle in the grave as well for the Apokato kill uh, monster. So I think we just stop here thinking that that set monster might be a tomato. But it wasn't. It was actually a Twilight Rose Knight. They go for Urbel, and we immediately bottomless that, thinking that they might have a, I don't know, probably a Mark of the Rose there. So we just mill more, go in for some pressure with the Card Trooper, set Mirror Force Pass. They Mark of the Rose Steel. They go for Caius, but obviously this is going to get super punished because we have Gores. Uh, so the Emissary of Darkness is going to come down, and then they just lose to Heavy Storm plus Brain Control. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mirror Force is the only way they even stay alive here, I think. So, and they don't have it. So they unfortunately got limited stapled to death there in that game. All right. Next matchup we have is up against Quick Draw, Dandy Warrior. I think Volcanic. No, wait. It was like just with Shell. So not not like full Volcanic Quick Draw. Uh, Shell's pretty standard. So they go set three. I decide to Raikou a back row. And the one we end up hitting is the Heavy Storm, which is kind of the not, not the greatest one to hit here. <laughs> Would have rather hit one of the other ones. Uh, we get bottomless. That's fine. Uh, we're still holding on to this Mind Con. Just uh, just chilling out. I, obviously, we don't want to use it and uh, have it not be Raikou because we would get kind of punished there. And so long as Trooper is the only monster on the board, it's like, why even, why even bother? So we hit over there, guys, uh, and the opponent's going to tribute some of the Titanium at this point. So they are in the full plant package, I guess. Uh, but Trigodia answers this pretty well. We attack, and we set Mirror. We go Mind Con now, because the both Dandies are gone. I'm like, all right, what is the chances that it's exactly the Sangan, which is basically the only thing that we get punished by? And it wasn't. So we go into Stardust, and then they, they add Shell here. I feel like they, they did this shell thing out of order, though. I guess maybe they just wanted to set the Solemn. But they could have, like, shuffled their deck so shell wasn't on the top. Uh, I maybe should have... I probably played this wrong. I should have just set the Typhoon. And then, like, made them choose when they attack directly and then drop Gores if they don't negate. Because uh, now we gotta, like, try and bait them into hitting into the Gores. Which they do eventually do, but it's like if they didn't, we have to sort of dig and find it out to the Stardust. Um, but fortunately for me, they do play right into the Gores here. Obviously, I probably should have just done that differently on this the, the turn that I played into the Starlight Road. Which I did not expect Road, to be fair. It's like, why would they be playing Road? But they were, so... <laughs> I guess uh, they could have gone for Quick Draw, but I don't know what it would have done here. And then we just make uh, Avenging Knight, and since the non... Um, since the token is a light monster and we go in and we pierce attack for game okay so moving on to game number two the opponent summons out a card trooper mills three they hit a dandelion i was super worried we we're just gonna get turn one drilled but 
Uh, once again, they don't have quick draw at the time that they need it, fortunately for us. Kind of the thing about quick draw is it, it can be can be crazy just making the drill warrior and like soloing the whole game or it can you can have it at inopportune times and it's just not good so the tragodia is nice here because it outs the stardust i thought that was going to be a problem if they had a battle trap but fortunately for us they do not uh however they do have a lot of card advantage from all of these shells being used and they're going to set a shell that baits the raiko but that's fine we have another raiko and we can book down this raiko and have another raiko activation um, which I figured we weren't playing any more into Heavy Storm by setting that Raikou. And we do get Stormed. It's not great, but it's effectively just a 2 for 2 because they lose their Bottomless and their Heavy, and then we lose the Typhoon and the Bottomless. Uh, so we flip up our Raikou, and this time they did set the Raikou. Now we summon the Honest out, and we get Poking. But they do, in fact, have a Gores, which is not great for us. Uh, we're going to bounce the Honest back, and then Raikou the Gores. But they go into Titanial. Now, we do have a play here, potentially, with Mind Control. Take the token, make a level 8 Synchro. Um, but I think I just hit into their thing and do it in main 2. So, yeah, we steal their guy, and then we make Colossal. Which I don't know if this is the right thing to make. Maybe I should have just gone Stardust. Because Quick Draw can kind of have difficulties with Stardust. Um... Yeah, and they just have like a Torrential and a Raikou. It definitely looks like Stardust would have been a better play. Uh, so we go for a Tribute Set, and then we summon Applicator Kill next turn, and they have Torrential Tribute. But that's kind of fine, because both the monsters are floaters, so we just give back the Oracle of the Sun, add another Supe, and swing in for 1,000. The opponent end phase Typhoon, so we're not out of the woods yet. Lucky us, though, here, uh, I do end up deciding to make Uraquizos, and then they're out of Raikos, which... This poor guy could not draw a Pot of Avarice to save his life. I don't know. Maybe he just wasn't playing three. That's a possibility. But it felt like he didn't draw it as much as he should have. And now he just dies to Uraquizos of beating his face in turn after turn after turn. So those were the games against Quick Draw and the other deck. We actually... We didn't drop any, so that's that's pretty cool. I don't know. I've, I've played a bunch of different versions of this deck. I had like a Fairy build. I had like a... A Shining Angel build with uh, Chaos Endmaster that was not the Fairy build. I had like a different build than that. And then we have like the li different other Limit Reverse builds. I had like an Ancient Forest build. But this is the one that we've had that's performed the best. So I'll have to see. Obviously, it's still it's still kind of a new thing that we're looking into. But, you know, the deck's not, it's not terrible. Um, it's got some cool things about it. All the like floating and Limit Reverse. Um, so I, I have fun with it. I had fun with it for sure. I thought it was a decent deck. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comment section, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.